about had you surrounded, didn't it, partner? Thanks for helping me out. Get this mail through to Cape Floyd. I'll get the mail through, all right. And you, too. I don't think I can make it. Oh, yes, you can. Now, brace up. Keep watching that hill. There he is, Alice, just topping the hill. That isn't Whitmore. Why, there's two riders. One of them is hurt. What do you make out of that, Barbara? Think they've been having more trouble over in Ruby Valley? It's likely. Here's your meal, rider. Hello, Sheridan. What happened to our rider? The Indians got it. Doctor, Hurry and get that doctor. Gordon. What did the doctor say? Whitmore has better than an even chance, thanks to Cal Sheridan here. I'm deeply indebted to you, sir. I'm Major Goodwin. It's a pleasure, Major. My daughter, Alice. I'm delighted. Good doctor. How is he? Well, if he don't die from my treatment, he'll pull out in first class shape. I guess there's no cause for worry. He'd come along. Well, thanks, Doctor. That'd be easy to say now. Wait till you get my bill. <laughs> be sure he's kept quiet. All right, Doctor. I'll stay right here with him. I'll see that he's not disturbed. Now, Doctor, you'll drop back later. I'll drop back in a couple of hours. Bye. Dad, I was just thinking, Mr. Sheridan may be the very man to take Griff Atkins' place at Ruby Valley. Yes, I've already thought of that, my dear. Well, I guess I'll be getting back to the digging. It's been a pleasure, Major. Sheridan, just what would you take to give up prospecting for a while and go to work for me in the Ruby Valley office? It wouldn't take much for me to give up prospecting, but I don't know much about Pony Express. Neither did anyone else six months ago. But you have a manager at Ruby Valley. Yes, Griff Atkins, but we've been having a lot of trouble in that district. Indians? Indians are bad enough, but we've had other things to contend with. The worst of it is, we haven't kept up our schedules. Well, that's a tough assignment for any man. We realize that, but Atkins hasn't been tending to business. He spends his time drinking and gambling. Yes, I've heard about some of his escapades. If anybody can help us, it's you, Sheridan. What do you say? Will you go to work for us? Uh, I'm afraid not, Major. You can name your price. Well, it isn't a question of money. It's then what is it? Well, a lot of things. Between here and Carson City are 550 miles of wilderness filled with bandits and Indians, and Ruby Valley is the worst section of the lot. You're not afraid, are you, Mr. Sheridan? It isn't that, but I don't think that I could get along with Atkins. You won't need to. I'm going to Ruby Valley and fire him. Well, I'd be pretty careful about that. Atkins is a bad-tempered sort of a fellow. But what can Dad do? He has to get rid of Atkins. Please, Mr. Sheridan, won't you reconsider? It would make everything so much easier. It would take a stronger man than I to say no to you. Then you will. Well, it looks like you've talked me into it. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you held out against Alice as long as you did. <laughs> I've never been able to. Good luck, Mr. Sheridan. Thanks. I'll be needing it. Cards. How many, Atkins? Dealer takes one. All right, it's up to you. How about ten? Each one. Pass. Now they'll call that ten. I'm forced to raise you. I'll call what is that? King I flush. Three seven. I've had a lot of luck lately. All bad. Say, hey, Atkins, is it about time that westbound rider of yours was coming in? Why don't you mind your own business? I'm sorry, I didn't mean anything by it. 
Well, then keep your mouth shut. Be a good little pony and let Shorty put this saddle on you. It ain't gonna hurt none. Shorty wouldn't hurt you none. But. Oh, don't call it. Look. Look, ain't that a pretty saddle? And it's all leather, too. Practically doesn't weigh nothing at all. Now, just be a good pony, will you? Please? Shorty! Oh, Shorty! Where are you? Down here in the corral! I don't think you can settle this doggone horse. Sure I can. I ain't gonna let no horse get the best of me. Now, you stand still. It'll all be over in a minute. What's the matter, Shorty? Having trouble saddling up? Oh, this doggone horse. Now, you know, it ain't going to hurt you none. <laughs> oh! Don't go on that old horse. I knew something like this was going to happen. <laughs> Want me to saddle him for you? Oh! You'll have to shoot him first. Oh, he's all right. You just don't know how to talk to him. Talk to him? You mean he don't understand me when I do talk to him? Where's my relay? I just fired him. You gotta go on to Cold Canyon. What do you think I am? I just rode all the way from Camp Floyd. You heard what I said. Do it or quit. I ain't gonna quit, not on account of you. I'll be glad when the Major gets here with that new manager. What'd you say about a new manager? You'll hear all about it in the next 24 hours. Mr. Atkins. What do you want? My dad sent me over with a requisition for some oats. We're just about out at Ten Mile Station. Well, what am I supposed to do about it? Grace has said about a new manager? Yes, and whoever the new man is, it'll be an improvement. Couldn't be any worse. But boy, oh boy, was that concerned when he rolled out. Hold up, Major. I'm leaving you for a while. All this is Indian territory, and it won't be very safe from here on. I'm going up into the hills and do a little scouting. You'll be close if we need you. You bet. I'll be where I can see you at all times. Here. Unfriendly, boys. What's on your mind? Business? 
What kind of business? Well, if you gents will put down that hardware, I'll give you a chance to make some money, honestly. This is on the level, Richards. All right, Lord, put them down. Oh, well, that's better. All right, let's have it, Atkins. Well, we need some hay for the stock. And I saw a bunch of it in your fields the other day. I'll buy all you can spare and pay you what you figure it's worth. You mean you'll pay us what we ask? Well, that's what I said. Can we do business? Don't see how we can lose. Do you, Claude? Not if there's any catch in it. Well, there is a little catch in it. Yeah, what's that? Well, I haven't got the money to pay for it right now. But Major Goodwin, the general manager of our line, is on his way in from Camp Floyd and should arrive soon. What's that got to do with us? Plenty. He's carrying enough cash to pay off all the boys and clean up all the bills along the whole line. Is that so? I've often told him he's a fool to carry around so much cash. Well, as long as you say Goodwin will be in to pay off, I reckon we can deliver that hay. Say about 10 ton. Well, that's fine. All right, gents, it's a bargain. By the way, Atkins, just as a matter of curiosity, how does Goodwin travel around with that money? On the stagecoach? Not the Major. He has his own rig. Well, gents, see you later. You notice he didn't say a word about the price? We could charge him 200 a ton if we had to mind it. Bless him. He ain't interested in no hay. That hay gag was just a way of getting around to what's really on his mind. He's got this district plastered with IOUs from gambling. He's tipping us off to a way to make a kill him. You mean he's figuring to cut in? That's what he's figuring. But I ain't. You mean we'll pass it up? We ain't ever passed up any good bet so far. And it's too late to start in doing it now. What do you say? Did we take a hint? The fools, we didn't. Take the road on the other side of the hill. It'll be a little rough, but we can make it. Here! Yeah.
Put on that box and get out of here. You're fired. Yes, sir. Well, did you hear me? Yes, sir. Well, then do it. Do what? Drop that box. You mean to just drop it? Yes, drop it, you half wit, before I knock your block off. Oh. Say, I, I, I just forgot I gotta saddle a horse. <laughs> I'll teach you a lesson you'll never forget. Oh, get me out of here! Somebody help me! Oh, glad to see you, Major. Welcome to Ruby Valley. Thanks. You can go right in, miss. There's a couple of spare rooms. I'll make it right comfortable for her. Why are you here? This is Cal Sheridan. I've heard of Sheridan. I've heard of you too, Mr. Atkins. Where am I? I can't see a thing. It's all dark in here. Get me out of here! Well, I guess you know why I'm here. One of your regular inspection trips. You know better than that. I came to straighten out this district, and I'm going to begin by getting rid of you. That may not be so easy. I've got a contract. Now listen, Atkins, I put you here because I believe that you were the only man I knew who had gumption and courage enough to carry out our schedules under any conditions. Then you admit the job was plenty tough. Oh, I never questioned that. Then you haven't been attending to business. You've been spending your time drinking and gambling and getting yourself into debt. I don't let any man talk to me like that, Major. I know something about this district. And what the Major says is so. Whether it is or not, what business of yours is it? Well, Sheridan is taking over here. Oh, is that so? Any objections? Listen here, Atkins. You know, the first time you took a drink on this job, you violated your contract with our company. Now, I don't want to have any trouble with you, so I'm willing to settle and call the whole thing off. Well, I'm not settling anything, and I'm going to stay right where I am. Is that your final decision? Yes, and that's only part of it. Now, you can get out and do it quick. That order goes to you, too, Sheridan. Now, get out. I can see one thing right now, that this section isn't large enough for both of us. That's exactly the way I feel. It's your turn to get out, Atkins. Well, don't go patting yourself on the back. Before I'm through with you, you'll wish you never heard of Ruby Valley. Listen, if you ever pull a gun on me again, it'll be your last. Now get out. I have a hunch, Major, that we're going to have a lot of trouble with that fellow before we're through. Get me out of here! Where am I? Oh! Get me out of this forest! I can't see a thing! You know, Atkins, that is the home steer you gave us. It was as bad for me as it was for you. I'm fired. Because of what happened out on the road? What happened? Oh, nothing. By the way, Atkins, did some fella come in with Goodwin? Some fellow riding a light horse? Well, that's Kel Sheridan. He's taking over my job. But I am to see you don't hold it very long. See here, Atkins. If you tip off your hand, maybe we can work out something together. Well, here's a tip a couple of smart gents could use. Ten Mile Station is just asking for somebody to grab it off. Old man Reeves and his daughter Norma are running it. Ain't that the gal that rides and shoots better than most men do? 
Yeah, now that's her, but she's here in Ruby Valley right now. Came for supplies. That leaves old man Reeves alone out of 10 miles. There's a dozen of the best horses on the line in his corral. That sounds like a swell layout to me. Sure, and if somebody don't grab it off right away, the Indians will, or they're not as smart as they give them credit for it. See you later, Atkins. I'm tough and rough and I'm ready. On a Mustang, I'm cool and I'm steady. I can ride, shoot, and rope and tie better than any guy, but I don't like no cows. I'm really just a humdinger. I can lick 20 men with one finger. But when cows catch a sight of me, they want a bite of me, so I don't like no cows. Oh, I act so refined with them. I am so polite, but when I try to be kind with them, they always want to fight. So that's why I'm looking so glum now. As a cowboy, I'm only a bum now. Though I'm rough, tough, and big and strong, can't seem to get along, cause I don't like no cows. That was fine, Shorty. Won't you sing another song? Oh, I ain't got time now, Normie. I gotta take care of Atkins' belongings. Oh, what you gonna do with him? Well, I figure as long as he ain't gonna be here no more, I might as well just throw him out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I figured a new boss would be needing this space. So I thought I'd just pack up Atkins' stuff nice and neat. <laughs> you know, this place is beginning to smell better already. If Atkins had given me my supplies yesterday, I could have been home by now. Yeah, I bet your pa misses you plenty, too. I guess he does. Besides, that job's too hard for any one man to handle. You know, I'm going to be real nice to the new boss. Maybe he'll give me a job as writer, instead of being a nursemaid to a lot of old broken down Bronx. Well, let's get this junk out of here. Shorty. Yes, sir. What's all this stuff? You mean all this stuff? That's exactly what I mean. That's what I thought you meant. Shorty was just cleaning out Atkins' things, Mr. Sheridan. That's right. What Normie says. But you can't do that to a man's belongings. I could do it to Atkins. No, you can't. Now, you pack that stuff up and put it away so he can get it when he comes after it. You mean pick up all this stuff? Absolutely. That's what I thought you meant. Well, I'll do it. But I won't like it. Norman, I've arranged for a wagon to haul some stuff out at the 10 Mile Station. Good, then I'll be able to go home. Dad'll be getting lonesome without me. And here are some instructions. Now, I want you to read them, and if there's anything in there you don't understand, I'll explain it to you. Now, all the stations in this section are going to operate along these lines. Good. It's about time we had something definite to work on. Boss, I ain't going to do it. What's the matter, Shorty? Oh, I'm protesting officially. Well, what's your trouble? Well, I've been thinking a lot lately. Here I am, throwing this stuff out here, picking it back up, taking it back in, and putting saddles on horses, taking them off again, carrying horses, cleaning horses. And all the time, I got ambition. <laughs> well, I'm mighty glad to hear that, Shorty. Say, you, you'll be needing some new riders soon, won't you? Yeah, I'll be needing several in the next few days. Well, if you, if you was to give me a job riding, I'd say you as a regular fellow. Well, maybe we can arrange it. You mean you will? Well, now, not so fast, Shorty. In the first place, you're too big. Oh. Now, you'll have to train down a bit. Well, that'll be easy. In the second place, I'd like to see what you can do on a horse. Uh, you ought to get out and practice mounting and riding and other things that'll be necessary. Oh, boy. You ain't half as bad a fellow as I thought you was. I think I'll go out and do some practicing right now. Hey, Shorty. Yeah? What about that stuff? You're a funny guy. Once you get something in your head, ain't nothing gonna get it out. That'll be fair weather, coming in from 10 Mile Station. The Indians got all the horses at 10 Mile. Well, how about my father? I'm sorry, Norma, he's... Well, go on, Ed, go on. It... Well, I'm, I'm afraid he's done for. I'm sorry, Normie. You better get some rest. 
Thanks, Cal. Shorty, take care of his horse. Norma, I'm going out to investigate as soon as I leave some instructions for Major Goodman. I'm going with you. No, you better stay here. It's not going to be very pleasant. Do you know Bud Larson? Sure. Well, get a hold of him. Send him out to the 10-mile station. I want him to take charge. All right, boss. Hey, Willie. Keep his horse walking. I got some business to attend to. Oh, boy. Yes, but there are Indians out there. Oh, I don't care. I'm not afraid. Well, you ought to be. You know what they do when they catch a white woman. Oh, but I've got to go. Don't you understand? Yes, Norma, I do. And if you'll promise to stay right close to me, I'll let you go. All right. I promise. Good. father wasn't killed by Indians. But that arrow. Someone planted it there to throw suspicion on the Indians. There's been a lot of that sort of thing going on around here. Let's have a look around. Sheridan's the best manager that ever came out here. Right on the job, man. Eh? On the job? He's the best fella I ever did see, too, and the smartest. Show you how smart he is. He aims to make an express rider out of me. <laughs> Shorty, that's fine, fine. Uh, do you think you can handle it? I can't miss. He told me all I had to do was to learn some fancy riding to train down to half my size. 
say, maybe he can make a rider out of me. No, you wouldn't do. Well, how do you know? You tell me where I can find Sheridan, I'll see what he has to say. Well, he's on his way to the 10 mile station. Bunch of redskins stole all the horses and killed old man Reeves. Is that a fact? Yep, I'd have gone out there with him, but one of us had to look after some important business here. Sure it's Redskins? Well, I... Uh... Say, that's an idea. You know, there's a lot of bad actors around here that aren't red at all. Oh, it won't make no difference, no how. Soon as Sheridan gets back, he'll know who done it. Say, Shorty, if you're in training, you better put that root beer down. That's just what I'm going to do. Put it down. <laughs> When did your father have the horses shod last? He took them to Ruby Valley only last week. The man we are after is riding a horse with a broken shoe. I think we'd better get into town. Oh, but what about my... I'll send someone out later to take care of things. Now, with this new invention of mine, anybody can make a Pony Express. All you have to do is jump on here, and it'll bounce you right up in the saddle. You're sure it'll work? You just watch me, and I'll show you. Let's see. Step aside. Stand back a little more. Well, here I come. <laughs> That's funny. It didn't work, did it? I reckon I'll have to get a bigger spring for it. Way back in Oklahoma in 1794, he ran into an Indian band, a million braves or more. They took out down the hill for him, and he grabs old Betsy here. And mowed him down right to the ground, and he's done the same each year. Way back in Oklahoma, they call him Honest Will, because he don't exaggerate stories that he tells. Yeah, not bad for amateurs. <laughs> amateurs, Dad? Why, Shorty would throw off it if he heard you say that. <laughs> Honestly, Cal, you'd scream if you could have seen Shorty these past few days. What's he been doing? He's been training to become a rider. <laughs> you don't mean he took what I told him seriously. Seriously? Why, he's even invented a new device to make fast mounts. <laughs> he told me he was going to put on an exhibition for you. When? The end of this week. I'd pay admission to see that. Too bad we won't be here. You mean we're leaving so soon? Well, I'm entirely satisfied with the way Sheridan has put the district back on an efficient basis. Well, there's very little more to be done except to keep it that way. As a matter of fact, Major, I've done very little. Well, what about Atkins and whoever murdered Norma's father? Oh, I don't think Atkins will show up around here anymore. And as for those horse thieves, well, you'll just have to keep your eyes and ears open, my boy. When do you figure on leaving, Major? Day after tomorrow at the latest. I'll see that you get an escort through the Indian Territory. Fine. I'm leaving pretty early in the morning. I've got to get some horses over to Ten Mile Station. May I go along? I'd certainly enjoy your company, but I don't think you'd better. Well, Alice, Mr. Sheridan is not going on a pleasure trip. He has business to look after. Well, it isn't that, Major. It's just that the trails are very dangerous. Well, that settles it. Back in Oklahoma, they call him on his will Because he don't exaggerate the stories that he tells. <laughs> hey, boys. This time kind of bent it down a little bit, you know, uh, uh, like it's underneath a haystack. Romantic. Western skies are heavy as I ride along the grass, singing through the twilight, my sad Sunny 
sinking low old timer over yonder in the west. Time to settle down, old timer. Time to settle down and rest. for me. Well, good night, Sheridan, and good luck. Thanks, Major. Good night, Alice. Good night. Good morning, Shorty. Morning. I got him all saddled and polished down fine for you. Good. But who is this other horse for? That's mine. I've been taking him out to sort of polish off a few of the rough edges. I'm going to show you something in a few days that'll surprise you. <laughs> I understand you've been doing a lot of practicing lately. I sure have. And let me tell you something. I'm going to show you some riding you never saw before. Yes, sirree. If I don't turn out to be the best Pony Express rider in this district, I hope to drop right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if I were you, Shorty, I think I would try some walking lessons first. <laughs> Guess I just nicely born an awkward cuss. <laughs> That's one time I fooled you didn't the bucket. Come right back 
here. I guess we understand each other. I guess we do. We got them staked out in the hills. Anything on your mind? Yeah. I know a fellow will buy all the horses he can get, no questions asked. He'll sell them right back to the Pony Express for a fancy price. I bought a lot from him myself. Looks like more and more we understand each other. It sure does. <laughs> but Lionel will be needing some new remounts right away. So the quicker you deliver the horses, the better. Maybe we better do it now. Maybe so. We'll be back in to celebrate after it's all over.
Cross. stopped him, didn't we, Ken? We sure did. Hey, Shorty, how did you get into this mix-up? Oh, well, uh, I was just practicing. They must have thought I was one of the regular riders. Oh, I see. Hey, Shorty, where's that man? What man? My prisoner. What? You sure there ain't something wrong with you? I, I didn't see nobody. Well, he was here a few minutes ago. <laughs> Maybe the heat's got you. Come on, Shorty. I've got a lot of horses to get back to Ten Mile Station. Ten Mile Station? Where'd you get them? From the little man who isn't there. Oh. Horses rocking on already. You didn't expect us to, did you? How did I find up across you, Paul? What are you talking about? I didn't double cross nobody. Why should I? I'll tell you why. You figures you could fix up your job at the Pony Express, get us to steal them horses, and then tip them off. You're talking through your hat. You mean you never sent that posse? What have you been drinking? Oh, there ain't no time for kidding. They got my brother Claude and all the horses. They? Who's they? We was heading those horses through the draw. All of a sudden, we heard shooting. Then this fellow Cal came at us with the rest of them right behind him. There wasn't anything for us to do but split up and make a run for it. Hmm. That sure sounds bad. Well, what are we going to do now? Maybe we ought to wait and see what happens. You killed my father. Gal, I know, Gal. I ain't letting you get away with that.
man that got away from. Cal, that's Claude Richards, the man who killed father. Here, Shorty, take care of the horses. Come on, all you horses. Don't go leave me here with all of you. It looks like we'll be able to breathe some fresh air from now on. Ooh. Leaving us today, Major Goodwin? Yes, going home, Norma. I'm sorry to hear that, but thanks for the new job. Thank Mr. Sheridan. He's the one who said he could use you here. I'll take your advice. Goodbye again. Goodbye, Miss Goodwin. show you my new invention. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, folks, I've got an invention that's going to revolutionize a pony express business. Now, you watch me get on that horse. 